Hello, I'm Bob Denton, and welcome to another conversation. Well, you know, we're also very much aware of our social and political polarization and deep divisions in our nation. And as we approach the presidential election of 2024, polls indicate that up to 70 percent of American voters do not want to see a race between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. But is there an alternative? There is a no labels movement gaining attention and provides an alternative to not only a choice for president between Trump and Biden, but also restores some of our guiding principles and reestablishing the voice of America's common sense majority. But joining me in a conversation is the co-founder of the no labels movement, Dave Walker. He has over 40 years of executive level experience in the public, private and nonprofit sectors. He served in three presidential appointments with unanimous cement confirmation each time, and most recently served as the seventh Comptroller General of the United States and CEO of the U.S. Government Accountability Office for almost 10 years. Mr. Walker, it's such a pleasure and an honor to have you on the conversation. Thank you so much. Good to be with you, Bob. Look forward to it. Well, you know, I have to com- I'll just confess right now from the beginning, uh, I'm part of that 70 percent. Um, I'd like to see some sort of alternative. Um, as it relates to Biden or Trump. Um, And I found it very intriguing in terms of this concept of no labels and absolutely uh, gaining headlines and what have you. And so let's begin. If you would give us kind of a 30-foot overview, and we'll get into specifics a little later. Uh, Tell us, what is no labels about? Well, No Labels was founded in 2010, and I've been involved since the very beginning. And it was the concept of not left, not right, forward, progress over partisanship, results over rhetoric. You know, I first my my first administration was Reagan. I was also in uh, the Bush 41 administration, and then I had positions uh, during Clinton, uh, Bush 43, and during Trump and Biden at, at the at, at the current time. And the fact is, things have declined dramatically with regard to partisanship, with regard to bickering, and quite quite frankly, with regard to not getting things done. And so what No Labels wanted to do was to try to perform, uh, uh, try to be able to get people to work across the aisle, addressing issues, to try to achieve bipartisan solutions. Now, in doing that, among other things, it helped to create the Problem Solvers Caucus, which is 62 members of the House half Democrat, half Republican, the bicameral group in the Senate and the House, bipartisan. Uh, They worked together to try to get things done. And they were responsible, frankly, for the debt ceiling deal, for the infrastructure bill, and for the CHIPS bill, among other things. Without their involvement, those bills would have not been passed. Uh, And now we're focused on the 2024 election, which I'm happy to go into should you so desire. Well, um, and what's interesting, um, if you could, um, that some 70% of Americans say we're on the wrong track. All of our major institutions, support has eroded, uh, lack of confidence increased. How How did we get to that point? Well, it's not just those statistics. Another shocking statistic is for the first time in the history of the United States, Over 70% of Americans believe that the future for their kids and grandkids won't be as good as it was for them. Uh, That is is totally unacceptable and, quite frankly, un-American. We got there because we now have what I would call a republic, which is a representative democracy that is not representative of nor responsive to the general public. The common sense majority, the so-called sensible center, do not represent a majority of the people in Congress. We have too many people on the far right, too many people on the far left. The margins in the House and the Senate are so close that every election is about control. Therefore, they don't want to compromise and work with each other to get something done. Um, uh, And uh, they treat each other like the enemy. What color uniform do you wear? If you don't wear my color uniform, then you're the enemy. Um, You know, compromise is not a bad word. Uh, And when you have large known and growing problems, it's prudent to solve them sooner rather than later. Well, let's get to the notion of coming up in the 2024 election. What's the intent and goal as you enter this campaign? Well, first, we've never had a situation where such a high percentage of individuals don't want the likely Republican nominee or Democratic nominee. 
In addition, as you mentioned, Bob, we've never had a situation where the degree of dissatisfaction with regard to the direction of the country, uh, with the outlooks for the future, uh, you know, are as bad as they are right now. And so those factors in combination uh, say that there may be an opportunity to have a viable uh, third option for president and vice president. Uh, in addition to that, we have a situation where uh, the major candidates aren't addressing the issues that the American people are most concerned with. Uh, and they talk about the problem, but they don't talk about solutions. Uh, and, and so what we've done is positioned ourselves to be able to gain ballot access in all 50 states plus District of Columbia, that in the event that the major parties do nominate Trump and Biden, uh, and, and if the American people still believe that they're not acceptable, uh, then we will offer a third option to the American people if and only if there's a pathway to victory in the Electoral College. We have no interest in being a spoiler. We're drawing equally from Democrats and Republicans. You know as well as I do, Bob, that 44% of registered voters are unaffiliated, like myself. Uh, Democrats are down to 27%. Republicans are down to 25 and, and so we see a pathway to victory today. And in fact, that pathway has gotten greater since the beginning of the year because both Trump and Biden have additional problems that are now manifesting themselves. Well, you know, I saw a survey that 63% of registered voters and the top battleground states say they're open for voting for a modern independent ticket if it is Trump and Biden. And of course, with the independence increasing, it seems like to me that there is a genuine opportunity to prevail. T t talk a little bit about the No Labels Insurance Project. Well, the insurance project is, as I touched on, and that is to gain ballot access in all 50 states, plus the District of Columbia, to be in a position, uh, if we see a clear pathway to victory, to offer that ballot access to a unity ticket, meaning the individuals can't have the same political affiliation, a ticket that will be committed uh, to the common sense agenda, which you can find on the website, nolabels.org, uh, that represents the issues the Americans care about, that we need to make progress on, and, and include some thoughts on a way forward to solve those problems. So that's where we're at. Uh, if, if, if that pathway exists, we will offer our line item. Uh, if it doesn't exist, we won't. But importantly, the common sense agenda is there whether we offer a ticket or not. Keep in mind Ross Perot. Ross Perot uh, ran. Uh, he didn't get a single electoral vote, got 19% of the popular vote, but he had an impact on the agenda of the president and ultimately had an impact on the contract with America that the Republicans adopted later on. Uh, and so that common sense agenda is something that hopefully will have an impact whether or not we run a ticket. And you mentioned getting on the ballots. I mean, that it differs state by state. It's kind of an expensive. Are you, of course, you're already got access on 10, I think, um, already. Do you feel confident that that, that can be, that need to be on enough states so that it can have an impact and influence. We have a game plan. We're executing on the game plan. You're correct, Bob. We're on 10 uh, already. We, we got two last week and we're continuing to build. Some of these states, we can't gain ballot access until next year because of the schedule. Some of the states, you can't gain ballot access until you actually have the names of the individuals who would be running uh, you know, for president and vice president. But we're confident we can get there. We've raised tens of millions of dollars. It is a very expensive and labor intensive effort. Uh, and and that's, that's why we're doing this work, because if somebody decided that they wanted to offer a third option you know, next year, they, they couldn't get there. They couldn't get on the ballot quick enough. You've got to do it early in order to have that option. Well, and and it's hard to talk about. I mean, we talk about a third party like Libertarian or the Green Party or something like that. This is not really a third party per se. It's more of the notion of how you approach the issues, the problems, uh, moderation and those kinds of things. Is that a, a good way of thinking about it? How would you characterize that? Is it a third party kind of movement or is it different than traditional third party? We're a political movement not a political party. Uh, there are third parties, fourth parties, fifth parties. The forward party is now trying to create to uh, gain traction throughout the country. The, the fundamental difference is 
is that we're only interested in running a unity ticket if certain conditions exist in the 2024 election. We're not trying to run candidates for the House, for the Senate, for governor, for the state legislatures, for mayor, for city council, et cetera. That's what parties do. Parties basically are talking about establishing a mechanism where they can run people at all levels. That's not what we're talking about. But at the same point in time, as you notice, you know, noted uh, that we are a political movement. We want to make progress on the issues and challenges facing the United States and to try to help solve those problems sooner rather than later. Well, so it seems as if if it's Biden and Trump, OK, game on what it sounds like. But what if, for some reason, because Trump may be vulnerable, it's Biden and X? Does that change the calculus? We'll have to do the polling and find out whether or not a pathway to victory still exists. Uh, uh, in addition to that, if it turns out it's Trump and Y, you know, on, on, on the Democratic side, that pathway may not exist. Uh, and But we won't be able to determine that until uh, we know who the likely candidates are. And the reason that we're saying it won't happen until next spring is a vast majority of of likely uh, candidates are determined after Super Tuesday. And so we're going to have a convention in Dallas, April 14 and 15. That's when we'll gather delegates. uh, And we expect that by that time, we'll end up uh, determining whether or not we're going to offer our line and who we're going to offer our line to. And and we're working out the process, uh, but it could culminate at that convention. And so how do you how how are you going about finding the potential candidates? Um, Are they going to be self-disclosing? Are there going to be some recruitment? Would there be two ballots, two sets that the convention might be confronting? Is it mix and mingling? I'm fascinated by that concept. We're working that out, Bob. But basically right now, we're identifying people who have expressed an interest. And I'm not going to mention any names. We've identified people that we think might meet the criteria who may not have expressed an interest. Uh, We're in the process of determining exactly how we would go about determining uh, who we would offer our ballot line to. Uh, That will include such things as whether they're well known, whether they're respected, whether they uh, whether there's somebody that we believe uh, could resonate with the American public, whether they're committed to the issues that are in the common sense agenda, various other factors. We clearly want to be able to get input from the American people with an emphasis on the tens of millions of people who have already told us that they're open to a third option for president uh, and vice president if it turns out it's Trump and Biden or potentially other options. Uh, and it ultimately is likely to culminate in the conven- uh, at the convention in April 14, 15. But there will be some competition and there will be some polling. Uh, and we look forward to that. Well, gosh, you know, I, so so. How do you become a delegate to be able to come to the convention? Are you going to have to separate a, a certain number of self-identified Democrats or Republicans? Or how do you see that evolving in terms of having a convention? Well, first, I'm uh, the point person for Virginia, and I live in Alexandria, Virginia. And so we're in the process right now of, uh, you know, from the people who support no labels, uh, and we've got many people who support no labels, identifying people who are willing to be delegates and go to the convention, uh, identify people who are willing to be electors and would go uh, to Richmond in December of uh, 2024 if we run a ticket and if that ticket prevails uh, in Virginia, Uh, identify people who are willing to uh, be surrogate speakers, identify people who are willing to uh, you know, help us, uh, you know, raise additional funds, et cetera. So we're in the process of doing that now. And, you know, we'll have uh, we'll have uh, two plus thousand people uh, at the convention. Wow. Well, is it so on specific issues, whether it's Social Security, immigration, inflation, whatever the issues are, are they contrast positions of no labels compared to a Biden policies on issues or Trump's policies on issues. In other words, are there differences? It won't be as personality, but there are differences approaching a number of issues. Right. We we want there to be an issue oriented and results focused campaign uh, in the uh, common sense uh, booklet, which you can get on the no labels.org site. Uh, you will find that there are 30 issues there. In addition to that, we put together a one pager about 10 of the top issues where we've actually done a side-by-side to show 
What does the common sense agenda say and a way forward? What does Biden say and what does Trump say? And you'll see there are significant differences. Let me give you an example. Social Security. I used to be a trustee of Social Security and Medicare for five years, one of two uh, public trustees. Uh, both Biden and Trump have said, I won't touch Social Security. Well, you that sounds like they're doing you a favor, right? They're not. It's exactly the opposite. By saying that I won't touch Social Security, it means they support cutting benefits 20 plus percent across the board in about 10 years and growing. That's what their policy means. That is irresponsible. It is unacceptable. Uh, and uh, whereas the common sense agenda talks about a way forward to reform Social Security sooner rather than later uh, in an equitable and sustainable fashion. Well, I do want to go back and, 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 and have you expound a little bit more on an aspect of, quote, not being a spoiler. I have to tell you, and, and, and I uh, had such admiration for Daddy Bush, um, Ross Perot, I think he did kind of spoil it. What I read, even as recent as this morning, there are those who are attacking no labels of saying, if no labels has a candidate, it's more likely to benefit Trump rather than Biden. Um, how can you frame or talk about the notion that it really would not be a spoiler if there is an alternative? Well, first, I was a, a Bush 41 presidential appointee uh, and was part of his administration. Uh, secondly, I was a friend of Ross Perot, uh, and he ran in 1992. Uh, I also know who ran his campaign, uh, who's a friend of mine. Uh, and, and the truth is uh, that, that uh, Perot was not a spoiler. Because the data shows that of the people who voted for him, 38% would have voted for Bush, 38% would have voted for Clinton, and 24% wouldn't have voted for at all. Uh, in addition, he didn't get any electoral votes. And as you know, you get elected for president based on electoral votes, not based upon popular vote. And that goes state by state. Uh, secondly, you know, you've got people that are upset about the spoiler argument. They tend to be more Democrat than Republican, although both are concerned about having more competition. I mean, competition is one of the things that made America great, quite frankly. But uh, and the reason that they're concerned about it is quite candidly, Biden's a very weak candidate. There's less base support for Biden than there is Trump. Trump has a stronger base of support than Biden does. Uh, but we have no desire to tilt it towards Trump nor Biden. We think both are unacceptable for very different reasons. I don't, we don't try to equate the two. They're very different individuals, but we don't think either one acceptable. But more importantly, the American people don't think that either one is acceptable. And so that's why we've got to be prepared to provide a third option if, in fact, they turn out being the nominees. So we're pro-choice, pro-competition. So let's do a hypothetical, even though I know people don't like to answer hypothetical kinds of questions, but it does raise the issue with the goal. And let's say that we have no labels, um, unity ticket, and it wins, and they end up in Washington. You still got that Congress uh, and the people there who can't get along now, who can't pass legislation, who uh, have some difficulties would we end up with just the same place, maybe? I think not. Let me tell you why. Okay. Uh, because the, the candidates that we would select uh, if we offer our ballot line, uh, A, would be focused uh, on working across the aisle. Uh, they would be issue-oriented, solutions-focused. Uh, and they would be running based upon the agenda that the American people want. That common-sense agenda it reflects the issues that the American people want solved and a reasoned and reasonable way forward to solving those issues. And so in effect, it would be a referendum style campaign. When you run, run, run a referendum style campaign, that means the public is behind you, which means that they will end up putting pressure on their elected officials to act uh, and create an environment where the failure to act has a higher price and cost than acting in a way that the public wants. So that's the theory, and we're sticking with it. Well, and and it sounds and it sounds right and reasonable too. Have to be a little patient for the timeline, but certainly that's the way it should go. I'm I'm interested in and in, in finding it interesting that right now the largest voting block are millennials. 
And some of them are kind of coming, they tend to be uh, center left for sure. Generation Z behind them, oh my goodness, I mean, that's really uh, uh, left. Um, and so you need the largest block of voters there. They already have a tendency toward center left. How would the, the no labels appeal to the largest voting group? Well, first, just because you have the largest numbers doesn't mean you're the largest uh, voter group because the propensity to vote is much higher among seniors than it is younger people, right? Uh, at the same point in time, uh, you know, our data analysis and polling includes uh, a representative sample in every state of a, a good, a, a representative cross-section of voters, including millennials. Uh, and millennials are very frustrated with the status quo. Uh, they're not happy with either one of the candidates either, uh, and they ultimately want problems solved. They, all, they also are beginning to understand that what's happening is that their, their future is being mortgaged uh, when they're going to face a lot tougher competition and increasingly interconnected and interdependent world, uh, and that it is in their interest to have people representing them who can end up solving some of these problems in order to create a better future for our country and a better future for them. You know, I find it curious. There would be some argument that, um, and you addressed this a little bit or, or mentioned it, about, well, why not, let's say that I want to run for Congress on a no labels and, and, and I buy into the agenda. And, um, but you're saying you're discouraging and not wanting down ballot support. Do you think that dilutes the effort, uh, time? Why would you not? It seems like that might be a positive if you had down ballot candidates, no label candidates. Well, Bob, right now we're focused like a laser on president and vice president uh, because the president is the one that sets the national agenda. The president is the only person that's really elected by all the people. The president is the only person that has the bully pulpit. And in order to be able to solve these issues, if you don't have a president who's willing to lead, to be able to make tough choices, to be able to bring people together, you're going nowhere fast. Uh, th I, there's no doubt that there are people that would like to run on the no labels line at, at uh, you know, both at the federal level, uh, you know, for Senate, House, et cetera, as well as in state uh, offices. That is not our plan, uh, but we don't want to dilute our effort. Uh, if, if that's something that might be considered in the future, uh, we'll see. But right now, we're focused like a laser on the top two spots. Well, we only have a couple of minutes or so remaining. I want to provide you an opportunity to for your final thoughts and that you would like to share to the audience. America is a great country, in my view, the greatest on earth. But we have serious problems. We're a declining power. We have many challenges that we have to come to grips with from an economic, from a national security, from a diplomatic and cultural perspective. You know, Washington is broken. Uh, there, there's too much fighting, not enough progress. Uh, our, our, our system is not representative of or responsible, responsive to the general public. The common sense majority wants change. They want results. No Labels is here to help provide that option if the conditions are right. Please go to nolabels.org, check us out. Don't just check out what we're uh, trying to do with regard to the 2024 presidential and vice presidential uh, election, but also check out the common sense agenda, the issues that people care about and sensible solutions to solve them. Well, I have to say that obviously I'm very intrigued. Um, it sounds like a path and a blueprint, and I too would encourage, and we'll have the uh, web address um, so that people can go and check you out and certainly looking at the No Labels Common Sense Policy Booklet that features 30 uh, ideas to address where we are now. Well, thank you so much. That's all the time we have. And I want to thank my guest, Dave Walker, co-founder of No Labels. And of course, I want to thank you for joining us and hope you'll do so again for the next conversation with Bob Denton.